I am beating every N64 game, and I mean all of them. The twist is, the next game I play is randomly selected, so I have no clue what's coming next. This is the journey to beating every N64 game. Game number 147, Shadow Man. Released in 1999, this game was developed and published by Acclaim. This was a game I wasn't familiar with until starting this challenge, but a lot of people have told me they're excited for it. Shadow Man even had a remaster released on modern consoles in 2022, so it definitely has a following. I also noticed the rating of this game being mature, which was quite rare for the N64. You know what? I have a pretty good feeling about this one. Usually the games people tell me they're excited for are at least decent, so maybe it'll even be fantastic. Let's get into it. The game has a single player story mode, so that's what we'll be doing to beat this game. It opens with a cutscene in a sewer. We hear a monologue from the infamous Jack the Ripper. He says he was killing people to try to obtain eternal life. It didn't work, so he's gonna try stabbing himself? Yeah, good plan, buddy. Some sketchy dude shows up saying his name is Legion, for we are many. Isn't that what those anonymous dudes say? Anyway, he asks Jack to build a cathedral of pain where all these people seeking immortality can join together. There, they shall construct a dark engine, powered by dark souls, so they can create an army of immortal soldiers. Ah, oh, jeez, that sounds pretty not good. Legion says to construct it in a place called Deadside, where you can only go if you've died. So naturally, Jack stabs himself immediately, trusting this guy he met 30 seconds ago. Then we get a new cutscene where two people are lying together on a pretty disgusting mattress. The woman is named Agneta, and she senses darkness is near. The other guy is Shadow Man, the main character. She says some people called the Five have arrived and the prophecy says they will bring about the apocalypse. Apparently Shadow Man has got to save the day because he's the only one who can travel freely between the living world and dead side. He's got to collect the dark souls or else the world will end. After all that, I finally gained control. There wasn't really anything I could do for now other than run and jump. I was just minding my own business trying to figure out where to go when this dog jump scared me. What the heck was that, man? Apparently I can make Shadow Man climb on ropes that overhang. And he's climbing backwards. That's such a weird looking animation. Eventually I made my way to a building where Nettie was. What happened to that other building we were in? She tells us the Dark Souls are unable to be destroyed. This is what allows them to grant immortality. She says we find the Dark Souls sealed within these things called Govi. They've been sealed by voodoo magic, so no one can open them. But maybe Shadow Man can find a way. He goes to pick up his gun and he sees a vision of what I presume is his brother Luke. It seems he died in the past, but Shadow Man believes he's still alive somewhere. Luke's teddy bear is how we can transfer ourselves to Deadside. She then tells me to go to Deadside and find some guy named Jaunty who's waiting for me at the narrow gates. Jeez, so much lore to open this up. Well, now that I had a gun, I obviously had to see what would happen if I shot Nettie. Thankfully, she doesn't die, she just complains that I'm messing around, I need to take this seriously. Well, since I have a weapon, I guess I gotta use it. Look, those dogs attacked me first. You saw that jump scare earlier. Now I had to figure out where it wanted me to go. I found an abandoned mine shaft or something with signs saying danger. This looks like the way. I found some water I could swim in here, and the animation is certainly something. Oh, I ended up getting stuck by the ceiling and drowned. It actually turns out this was what I was supposed to do, because dying takes me to dead side. Shadow Man goes on some big monologue about he is a god who can't really live or die. Yeah, whatever, buddy. Now I've lost my shirt for some reason. Also, the gun shoots this weird spirit energy rather than normal bullets. The enemies kind of explode from the energy and they drop these red health orbs. Past here, I ran into Jaunty, a weird bone snake with a top hat. He keeps calling me Michael, so I guess that's Shadow Man's real name. If you didn't know, this game has full-on voice acting and it's kind of decent. Jaunty says Nettie was probably right about this coming apocalypse as a massive dark tower has appeared in Deadside recently. Shadow Man keeps telling him to open the gate and this Jaunty guy just loves to talk. Something about he was playing with Attila the Hun and the heads from the French monarchs during the revolution? I don't know dude, just let me through. In this area there was an even scarier version of those zombie enemies. 
They run at me with their claws or whatever and they had way more health. The platforming in this game is decent enough, but shooting enemies with this gun leaves a bit to be desired in my opinion. I was just so lost from this point, which is a very common theme with this game. It is definitely not linear at all. Eventually I made my way to a rather odd looking door. Shadow Man stood at the pedestal just outside and was zapped, causing the door to open. Well that was weird. That led to a large cave with many new paths. I found another one of those doors, but this time Shadow Man couldn't open it. I wasn't really sure why at the time. Past that door though was another one of those Govi. I suppose since I'm in dead side I'm able to open these. Whatever the case, it opened to reveal a dark soul. Shadow Man like spins around and twists in all different directions as he absorbs it. With this dark soul I could now open that previous door. Ah, I see, the purple energy drained when I opened it. Getting more dark souls increases that meter. This led to a bridge which went to a completely different area. There was actually quite a long load time here, around 15 seconds or so, which is unheard of on the N64. There's a brief cutscene where Shadow Man rambles about the different areas of Dead Side and how souls of creatures that are stuck in limbo remain here, while he rules over them. Yeah, yeah, get over yourself, buddy. Now Shadow Man is swimming in a pool of blood. He also can apparently hold his breath indefinitely when in Dead Side, or maybe this liquid somehow lets him breathe? I don't know. Still trying to figure out where the heck to go, there was a temple or something like that. One of those dark souls was on the other side of some lava, but I just couldn't reach it. If you die, you just respawn at the last area you entered. There was another route to get to where it was, so I had yet another dark soul. This one didn't increase my dark energy level though, so it looks like it starts to take more to level up each time. Some sections had me do some basic platforming. You know, jumping, climbing ledges, shimmying. Oh, and jumping backwards an insane amount. How on earth would someone do that? Guess that's just how good Shadow Man is. It was past here that I found yet another Dark Soul, and I gained another bit of energy too. There was another Dark Soul in a different area. Keep in mind, between finding these, or even finding where to go next, there is a lot of wandering around aimlessly. No indication as to where to go or anything like that. I was purely on my own. So now there are two-headed enemies, which is always nice. Oh, and I found this glowing pedestal with a skull thing on it. The game calls it an Asan. This is something I could wield in my offhand and it shot fire. Or at least that's what it looked like. I'm not sure it was actually dealing damage to enemies. Oh wait, never mind, it definitely does. The enemies just don't flinch when you use it. I found yet another one of these doors, this time requiring two dark energy points to open. I feel like all the textures look the same, like, I don't know, it's just so hard to know where I've already been. This appeared to be the right way to go as a cutscene played with Shadow Man rambling about how this was the asylum. The dead are tortured here and blah blah blah. This is all so overwhelming. This place had some kind of poison like it was a moat. Dead Side sure is a weird place, man. Then there were these crushers that had quite the rough animation. It's like I can see each individual frame happening. This must be what it's like when a cat watches TV. Now I was at the asylum itself. There were moving spotlights and I thought surely something bad would happen if I stepped into one of them, but uh, nope. Absolutely nothing. Cool aesthetic at least. The door to the asylum wouldn't open so I had to go underneath to this lava area. There were vents putting out hot steam. It was just nice to feel like I was actually making some progress. Well, at least it felt nice when I didn't have a janky jump and die. What on earth was that interaction with the wall? Come on. Once I got past this, I found myself in a rather unsettling room, but very fitting for this being an asylum. Oh my god, Shrek is in here and he's got hooks on his hands. Yeah, I got pretty roughed up and died. Ugh, so the way respawning works is the last place you loaded is where you respawn. And man, this game doesn't load very often. Even worse than a Dark Souls run back. This time I was a bit smarter and just shot him from up above. Never had a chance. Ah, uh, well that only worked for one of these guys. The way to deal with them is just not be in a close quarters area. Kiting them backwards works just fine. Also, what's up with these cages all over the place? What exactly is going on here? Yet another Dark Soul obtained. I was just racking them up at this point. The place devolved into a futuristic looking area. Almost like I was walking around in a submarine. Within here, I found the Engineer's Key. 
With this, I could now open up the locked doors I've seen with these panels outside of them. Oh shoot, I see what's going on here. There have been all kinds of weird things that look like they should have done something. I'm going to explore more of the map, unlock new abilities to interact with those things, thus revealing more of the map. This is a Metroidvania! Oh my god, Metroid 64 is real! Except it's this guy instead, but still, that sure explains why I was getting lost so much. Oh snap, now the enemies have guns. It was at this point I learned I could lock on to enemies. Yeah, that certainly helps with combat. This combined with strafing makes it a breeze to take down those things. Oh look, yet another Dark Soul past those dudes. And then beyond that, another. This brought me to level 3. I didn't realize it at the time, but you need certain levels of dark energy to open those doors that he charges up at. Next, I ran into some kind of cable car. This sure feels out of place, although the inside does kind of resemble a coffin, so it's kind of on brand. This led to a completely new massive area, yet another dark soul was waiting for me here. Aw oh man, this game was already feeling so big, and it was only going to get bigger. So this took me to quite the weird room. It reminds me of a wedding chapel, and then there's just a picture of some random guy on the wall. And there's like a dead body strung up at the top of the staircase? I literally was so lost when I got here, none of this made sense. I was trying to see if any of my items did anything here when I learned the teddy bear is used for teleportation. This brought me back to Liveside where I found Nettie. She said the members of the five were somewhere in Liveside, but it was my job to figure out how to find them. Gee, thanks, real helpful. Well, I guess it's nice to know I can teleport around all the main locations. Aw oh, shoot, there's alligators in this place. I think it said we're in Louisiana, so it does make sense. Also, why does he wear a shirt in live side, but not dead side? It's such an odd thing to change. After terrorizing them, I found a sawed-off shotgun in a shack nearby. Those are always awesome. But yeah, there wasn't really anything to do in live side, it seemed. So I went back to where I found that weird room, and I found a different weird room. There's all these flashing lights and a picture of some guy. It said death on the wall, too. Then there was one with some big guy in a green tank top. I think these are the members of the five. This time at the top of the stairs, the strung up body had red smoke coming out of it. Shadow Man was sucked through it, and on the other side, I was in live side. I ran down the hall and ran into that guy in the green tank top. He was being quite racist. He goes on a big rant about how he's going to purge the world of all humans, all while flaunting his massive gun. Then he just started shooting at me. I shot him and his body kept turning all weird looking when I did. Yeah, I pretty much got owned. At least when I die, it puts me back here instead of taking me to dead side. Man, no matter how many times I shot him, he just wouldn't die. The fact that he turned all weird when I hit him had me suspicious. Nettie had previously mentioned how they have immortal energy. Apparently this guy's Dr. Victor Batrakian, otherwise known as the Lizard King. I got so fed up with him that I just ran away. There was an office nearby where I found an MP9. I noticed all the dead people around here were missing their head. Maybe that's like his signature or something like that, seeing as these people are all serial killers. I unloaded all the bullets I had in my MP9 into him and he just kind of got stunned for a bit. So yeah, it seemed impossible to kill him at this point. Apparently I'm not supposed to be here yet. While I was there, I did find this thing called an accumulator, but I had no clue what it was for. I went through a different one of those body portal things and now there was a new member of the five here. This one is Marco Cruz, otherwise known as the Repo Man. He's much more enthusiastic than that last guy. He says he's throwing a party for the apocalypse and then he somehow knows our name, as well as the name of our dead brother. I unloaded on him with the MP9, but just like the last guy, he flashed when I dealt damage. It seems I'm not able to kill any of these guys at this point in the game. Not really sure why though. The game has a file on all the serial killers, and I believe it's based on real info about them. Except with the added plot of this game and the whole We Are Many and Legion nonsense. I went back to Nettie and we were complaining about how we can't use our shadow powers during the daytime in Liveside. Of course, we can't just wait till nighttime because that would make way too much sense. Nettie mentions something called L'Eclipse. It's a blade somewhere in Deadside that can bring night to Liveside. Of course, she doesn't know where it is though. That explains why I couldn't hurt those guys, or why I can't obtain the Dark Souls in Liveside. 
I then went to Jaunty, who told me I need to look in the paths of shadow for this blade. This brings me to something quite interesting for this game. So the game has a map detailing all the different locations and the layout of the world. Problem is, it doesn't exist in-game. If you purchased this game back in the day, you'd receive a physical copy of the map alongside the manual. It's pretty cool, but man, imagine you bought the game used or rented it and they just didn't give you the map. You would be so screwed. The map shows all the doors with the soul levels required, as well as specific items that can be found in certain areas. So I made my way to the Paths of Shadows. Here I found a book called The Prophecy. It's dated from the year 1888, and it was written by a previous Shadow Man. He made these paths to allow for a path for Shadow Man to travel through Deadside and bring order. He then talks about ancient artifacts he's discovered. Due to the evil brewing at the time, he had to seal them behind various doors, all requiring increasing levels of strength. After his note is the actual prophecy, which is a massive amount of text and images explaining the game. Basically, there's this evil guy who descended upon Deadside long ago and he wants to destroy the world. The Sisters of Blood were called upon to seal the Dark Souls within the Govi so the evil guy couldn't obtain them. Then that evil guy went to the living world and called himself the One Who Is Many, and he united the most evil killers to build the asylum in Deadside. He then obtained Dark Souls that weren't within the Govi and created gateways to go into Liveside directly from Deadside. The sorceress, aka Nettie, dreamed of the Five and the Lizard King announced the apocalypse was upon them. So Nettie called upon Shadow Man to save the world. The Serpent, or Jaunty, guarded the gates to Deadside until Shadow Man returned. These doors from the previous Shadow Man are called Coffin Gates and they are beginning to be unsealed for the first time in centuries. Then there's an image showing how many Dark Souls are needed to obtain the next level. It's not a cumulative amount, but like, you're starting from zero each time. So in total, there are 120. It talks about how Shadow Man traveled to Liveside, but he was unable to damage the Five due to it being daylight. Then Nettie will fall into a deep trance while Liveside turns dark. Then the evil guy obtains all the Dark Souls and destroys the world. The end. Well, a lot of that has already happened, so uh, hopefully I can change it. Well, with the map and now with this prophecy, I had a decent idea of what was going on. I knew there was a level 3 coffin gate nearby, so I went and opened it. Within here was La Lune, a piece of L'Eclipse, according to the prophecy. Alright, alright, now we're cooking. With this new knowledge, I knew the next place I had to go, the Temple of Fire. Shadow Man goes on a big monologue every time he reaches somewhere new, it seems. There are multiple temples within Deadside where the Dark Souls originated. Or something like that. Well, that's what I thought. I explored the area there, but it led to nothing. This caused me to question the map and wonder if I even understood it. It ended up being that there was a hidden path under the blood water stuff right at the entrance to that area. Oh my god. I was running around for an hour and a half trying to find this stupid thing. That will be a common theme with this game. Right at the start of this place, I found a switch that caused a ledge to rise up to what looked like an entrance. Seems like I'm going to need to find all the switches to get there. Of course, with this being the Temple of Fire, there would naturally be things shooting fire at me. Pretty scary stuff. The second switch was past this area. Then down a different path, I found the third switch. Shadow Man mentioned something about the Sisters Awakening, and there was this flying woman shooting magic at me. So yeah, temples have these flying sisters around when they detect you messing with everything. They are the ones who created the Dark Souls according to the prophecy. Despite them being quick and having ranged attacks, they're no match for locking on and strafing. Really, there wasn't much danger from enemies once I learned that. This place had its fair share of platforming too. I had to climb along the rafters in one big room. Kinda weird seeing these wooden supports when the entire place is made out of stone. It was here I found the fourth switch. And then there was a room with several rising platforms that I had to jump across. At the top of this was the fifth and final switch, and now the staircase was complete. Well, can't go there until I get ambushed by like four sisters. Of course, there are dark souls scattered throughout this place, just like all the others. Probably won't mention every single one at this point, now that I know there's so many of them. At the top of that staircase I created were some rather odd doors. Looks like they're out of an alien spaceship. This led to a room hanging over lava that was straight out of Fall Guys. I guess the stakes are a bit higher this time around. 
There was one part where I could see four juicy dark souls all sitting at some alcoves in the top area, although I imagine they're harder to reach than they seem. Now I was in the biggest room yet, possibly the final area. A huge open room with mostly lava to stand on. Gives me vibes of that main area of the fire temple in Ocarina of Time. I found yet another switch in here and it lowered a thing in the center. Looks like I gotta bring that all the way down. Basically, I just jumped across some platforms to the corners of this place, hitting more and more switches. It was really simple. Shadow Man walked into the thing and was lifted in the air. It looks like one of those crazy spinning things you see at the local carnival. Some lasers zapped him and now he had these red tattoo things on his arms. This was a core ability unlocked, as I could now push blocks that were filled with lava. Or whatever it is. Point is, these blocks are really really hot and now it's safe to push them. That's not all though, I can also grab onto ledges that are on fire. How the fire got there, I'm not sure. Well, now I'd finished this temple. Since I was still at level 3 for dark energy, I couldn't open any new coffin gates. It was up to me to remember where I'd seen any hot blocks or ledges on fire. Ah oh god, I'm screwed. I got two new dark souls with this ability from those four I saw earlier, but that was it. There was a block I remembered in the Path of Shadows where I found the Prophecy, with another Dark Soul. Still not level 4 though. Ah, it's so frustrating, I just want to unlock more of the map. Oh good, my memory didn't suck this time around. There were these ledges on fire underneath the asylum that I could now pass. Here I found a guy with a chainsaw in one hand and a meat shield in the other. Duh, oh, these enemies suck. I learned I could charge the gun to deal more damage based on my Dark Energy level, which helped out a bit. More importantly though, there were two Dark Souls in this location and I'd finally reach level 4. Based on the map, I could now open two new coffin gates which felt amazing. Actually, scratch that. There were three back there. Guess the devs really wanted you to level up if you came here. Okay, scratch that one more time. Four Dark Souls. This really is the last one though. I remember seeing this one hanging here when I first got here and I was frustrated I couldn't reach it. I found the level door and opened it. According to the map, this leads to a place called the Cageways. And right on cue, Shadow Man went on his little monologue about the Cageways. I honestly have no clue what he's going on about when he does this stuff. The start of this area had a big train. Again, the inside was lined like a coffin, just like that cable car. Kind of a weird aesthetic choice, I must say. Ah oh man, I'm going down the train cars, just like that one mission in GoldenEye. At the front was a switch for my engineer's key, and I took off. Obviously, there were Dark Souls to find here as well. This was the fourth one, and I needed eight total to reach level five, which was my next big goal. So this place is linked to the asylum by the engine room. It makes sense that there's so much lava all over the place. Oh look, there's yet another cable car here. I wonder where this is going to go. Coffin interior, as expected. There was a cutscene on the other side where Shadow Man thought he was hearing his former brother Luke. Luke called on him to follow him down the path. Down here were some massive moving pistons. Must be the engine room. Luke called out to us once again and oh look, he's shirtless in jeans just like his big brother. How awesome. Luke says he's scared and needs us to help him. So I was able to walk up to these moving pistons but there was no way to pass them. You know, despite being able to clearly jump high enough to reach them. Well, guess we can't save Luke anytime soon. Now the enemies are starting to resemble Count Dracula. Except they have guns of course. So there was a weird puzzle type thing where I used the engineer's key to raise and lower some purple stuff. Also, this area got really laggy. Honestly, I don't know what the logic of it was. I just kind of spammed until they were all completely full and it worked. Apparently this caused the first piston to stop moving as I could now go past it. Didn't really help anything because all the others were still going. And now I was lost as to what to do again. I'll take this time to talk about the graphics and music. The graphics are really good for the N64, I'd say. The game has a high res mode if you have the expansion pack, and I was using it for this playthrough. The frame rate didn't really seem to change much when I turned it on. The art choice was quite repetitive, but it still looked nice overall. The music's pretty good, and the voice acting's honestly really good for the time period. Gotta remember that voice acting in video games was awful in the old days. For the music, there is one song in a place I haven't reached yet that absolutely drove me nuts. However, it does fit the area quite well. Anyway, I missed the other level 4 door and it turned out to be quite important. Not really sure how to pronounce this word. Poignier? Anyway, 
it allows me to climb up the bloody waterfalls. Okay, I've definitely seen a lot of those, so now I can get all kinds of new stuff. Now I could go back to all the old places and see what was going on. Like this waterfall right past Jaunty, where I found the last Dark Soul to reach level 5. Oh snap, there are two level 5 doors on the map, so I know where I'm going next. First up was the door leading to the dead end where I found Flambeau. With this, I could burn down walls with flames on them. Aw oh man, I'd seen so many of these things in the past. The other level 5 door led to a place called the Playrooms. That sounds fun. Past this door, I found a pineapple ring, also known as Le Soleil, the second piece of L'Eclipse. Arriving at the Playrooms, this sure didn't look like a fun place. Shadow Man had some negative things to say about it in his little monologue as well. At the start of this area, there was a large door underwater, so I figure I should try getting that open first. Alright, that's better. Oh my god, there's angry fish in the water here. Probably because their entire world has turned red from blood or whatever this stuff is supposed to be. I'd be upset too. There was a viewing window in an underwater tunnel with these weird dog things. Honestly, it looks like they're wearing jean shorts. This was the place I was talking about with the weird song. You just hear laughing and screaming and then a saw blade, presumably cutting through flesh. It loops over and over and duh, I hated it so much. There was an altar with a retractor on top. There were like angels singing in here, something weird. Such a contrasting song to that other one. I had no idea what this was for because it wasn't in the prophecy, nor was it mentioned in the game's manual. Honestly, this kind of feels like an oversight to me, and you'll see why it was the cause of some frustration. Anyway, I had to explore the playrooms now. Some of these rooms definitely look like they had experiments performed in them. You can probably kind of guess what was going on. I ended up in that room with the weird dog things, and of course they attacked. Sorry fellas, you've gotta die. So here's something people may have gotten stuck on. In this pool thing, there's a rather odd looking pipe. Turns out you have to shoot the stuff on top and it opens up to swim through. There hadn't been anything like that up to this point, so I got lucky figuring that out. It seems my ability to climb waterfalls extends to pipes with a small trickle of blood flowing down as well. So I swam through some pipes and all that jazz to find a room with some items sealed within glass cases. This is where I could finally use that accumulator I found like 10 years ago. However, I apparently needed three of them to unlock this. The map says the violator is located in the playroom, so maybe that's what this is? But yeah, I just kept making my way through this area, collecting dark souls, killing weird dog creature things. There was a place that looked like I should jump to it, you know? It looked innocent enough. However, it was completely filled with lava and I died. Man. That death put me so far back. I feel like the checkpoint system in this is lacking quite a bit. Not to mention every enemy respawns when you die too. So it was at this point I became lost. Like incredibly lost. I felt like I'd explored all of what the playrooms had to offer. It felt like the answer was to obtain enough Dark Souls to reach level 6 and I got a clue on how to do it. When you view the teddy bear to teleport, the game shows how many Dark Souls you've collected from each area. The left is the souls for that spot, and the right is the total souls in the game. With this, I at least knew where I was missing Dark Souls, but since it's a Metroidvania, maybe the ones I'm missing are inaccessible until I get some new ability. With this, I realized I was missing an easily obtainable one at the start of Deadside near Jaunty. But that was just one. Then there were two more I missed in the Asylum, but still, not enough for level 6. I spent longer than I'd care to admit looking for the violator, not knowing it was in that case and impossible to obtain. I still needed three more Dark Souls for level 6, like maybe I could find a single one I was missing, but three? Something was wrong. Finally, after maybe four hours, I found this area near the start past Jaunty that I just completely missed somehow. There was so much to do here, and I still didn't fully realize it at the time. The main thing is, I found three Dark Souls and I had finally reached level 6. Ugh, let me tell you, it feels like such a relief to level up because you just know you can open more of those gates. It was here that I fully realized what I'd missed. This is the Temple of Life and you're supposed to find it early on. 
It's not on the map anywhere though, it's just a giant area that says Wasteland. Well, that explains why my soul count was so tight before. There was lots of platforming and shimmying and stuff over lava. Probably not supposed to fall in it though. Ultimately, the end of this temple is a large room where I obtained a new item called the Baton. The real treasure here though are these deposits. You might have seen me collecting these red things in some of these clips. Well, they're called Cadeau, and getting a hundred of them allows me to obtain an additional life point. It's mentioned in the prophecy, and I was so confused as to why I never found a way to use them. This explains that. So this is what the baton is for. I'd seen quite a few of these already, but you can stick it in these glowing pedestals to teleport to a different location. This specific one just took me back to the start of the temple. Ah, another point of confusion. I thought these were places where I found a new item because it looks so similar to those other pedestals. Anyway, now I was finally progressing. So time to open more coffin gates. This one had a new item called Insane. The prophecy described it as that which protects. Looks enough like a shield to me, so it checks out. Oh hey, I remember seeing this glowing pedestal a bunch of times. Let's see where it takes me. Ah, what the heck man, right into the lava? That's low. There was a second level 6 door that opened much more of the map. It's hard to read on the map, but I think it says this is the Temple of Prophecy. Either way, another huge dungeon to explore. Okay, this NCAN thing is so good. I can just block literally any attack, which honestly is kind of broken. It does drain energy, but it's a very slow rate. Now I'm dealing with janky pole obstacles that won't let me grab onto them. Real glad I actually landed on that platform, because I couldn't see where I was going at all. One mistake and it's into the lava. I had to climb for like 10 minutes along a rope to reach a dark soul on top of this rather odd looking statue. Really, these temples all kind of look the same. Further and further in I went, pressing switches to make things move. Also getting harassed by sisters constantly. Mostly this just felt like a spin-off of the other Temple of Fire. It included me missing jumps and falling to my death quite often. I swear these rope climbs are so janky. Ah oh man, swinging hammers and spinning blades in a thin room. Some of these rooms are nearly copied and pasted. It's still fun enough to navigate though. One thing I did appreciate in this area was a block placed at the starting area. Once I'd progressed enough, I could push it out from the wall to create a shortcut to much further in the temple. At least they acknowledge that dying really far in sucks, so that does help. Well, after wandering around aimlessly for half an hour or so, I figured out where the end of this place was. I had to make a rather large jump over the lava. Through these questionable looking doors was another one of those ring things for Shadow Man to place himself in, and he got some new tattoos. Oh shoot, now I can finally walk over the lava. Or maybe this is like hot coals? Cause there's clearly some hotter looking lava right next to it. But anyway, yeah, this is awesome. I've seen this stuff so many times, this opens up so much of the map. Nearly everything was in my reach now. I felt like I could do anything. Switch hanging over the hot coals? No problem for me now. I cleaned up a bit around the Temple of Prophecy, then went back to the Temple of Fire. I finally had reached Soul Level 7. According to the map, this would allow me to obtain the last piece of L'Eclipse. If you feel like I'm skipping over a lot of stuff, I kind of am. This game took about 30 hours to beat in total, and that's a lot to go through. If you are interested, I do post full playthroughs of these games on my other channel, The Beast Plays, which is always in the description of these videos. No time to waste, I want to finish that blade. Time to open these level 7 gates. First, the one of these gates leads to a brand new area, the Lava Ducks. This place, as you might guess, is full of Lava Ducks. You know, like aqueducts, except filled with hot magma instead. The main area of this place was a huge round room with a spinning thing in the middle. It's kind of like a blender for the lava or something weird. Something you'd see like in an industrial cake mixing factory. Then there was this pole with razor blades spinning along it. Who's building all this stuff? It just seems so impractical. Oh, look at this massive drop. Good thing the game doesn't have fall damage because this is where I tested it. Anyway, I explored here for a while, got seven dark souls or so, and figured I should go open that other level seven door. Within here, I found a new item, Marteau. What the heck? I thought this was supposed to be the third piece of the blade. Well, at least this thing lets me whack drums to remove wooden barriers. That's such an oddly specific obstacle, but okay. I've definitely seen these things around too. 
Well, that stinks. My only other thought is to try reaching level 8 to open the next coffin gate. Back to the playrooms I go, to where that lava I died in was. Past here was a huge creature within a cage. Thankfully, it didn't escape and eat me. It didn't seem there was anything I could do here, though, so guess this isn't it. I tried the Temple of Life. Nope, nothing new here. Where are all these drums? I swear, I've seen so many of them. Okay, the Temple of Prophecy's got my back. I knew I saw these before. Uh, okay, so this actually only gave me some cadeau. You know, I was really hoping for something nicer, like it Dark Souls, maybe? I did find one Dark Soul here, but it wasn't even related to the drums. Ugh, I hate feeling stuck. At least I had collected all of them from that area, so I knew never to check there again. Then I realized I'd missed a path at that lava area in the playroom, so that was another one. 59 in total now, but I needed 71 to level up. This just doesn't feel right. Why did the map say I'd get the last piece of the blade, but it was the marteau instead? I found five more Dark Souls in the cageways, but I still needed seven more, and it was feeling like I'd exhausted most of what I had access to. One of them, I think I cheesed it anyway, because that jump does not look intended. After an hour or so of wasting my time, I realized what happened. There were three level 7 doors, and I was used to there being two of each. So finally, I went to the actual coffin gate with the third blade piece behind it, and I was free. I immediately warped back to Nettie, and she had me give her the blade. Shadow Man laid down on the floor, and she did some weird chant, and then stabbed him in the chest. What the heck? However, she then went into a trance, just like the prophecy said. Oh shoot, now I have access to my shadow powers in live side. Well, 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 I certainly have access to some new Dark Souls now. All these free ones just sitting here in Louisiana. After that, I could make my return to that prison and take on the Lizard King. Ah, oh, it felt good to finally take him down. Man, kind of wild how you can find this guy so early, but you can't kill him till so late. Then I warped back and went to the other area and took down the Repo Man. Two of these clowns down and nearly soul level 8. They actually take quite a bit of hits to kill, so it's not exactly free. After this, I finally learned the use of the retractor I got 27 years ago. The other strung up bodies in the Cathedral of Pain needed one shoved into them to allow warping back to live side. Rather than taking me to the prison, this instead took me to Down Street Station, where I found Jack's journal. Basically, Jack details how he created the asylum and these vessels to travel between dead side and live side that he calls schisms. Here is the first place where the game explains you need to use a retractor on them. Kind of weird since you need to use one to find this journal, but whatever. One new thing the journal details is how they plan to attack the world. They've created these soldiers from the Dark Souls called True Forms. All I know is that thing sure looks a lot like the one I found in the playrooms earlier. Then he details the dark engine that was created and how it's blocked with five pistons. It shows the tubes I saw previously, but then it mentions combinations that are needed to solve each one. That'll definitely be nice for later. So yeah, a bit of lore, a bit of actual useful info for progressing. Well, it was time to go to the sewer and hunt for Jack the Ripper. Well, him or whoever is in this place. This area was really dark. It made it hard to see. There was one area where I even had to swim through the sewer. The spikes weren't even the most dangerous thing. Can you imagine how many parasites and such are floating around down there? Disgusting. So, you know, I swam around in the poop water for a while, and this led to a pretty nice looking house. Within here, I found another accumulator. Not helpful for progressing, but it's nice. This nice house was protected by guard dogs just outside. Man, I hate when games make me kill dogs. Well, since I have a weapon, I guess I gotta use it. Look, those dogs attacked me first. I just got so lost in this area. I blame it partially on the darkness, but yeah, there's a ton of wandering around here. I eventually ran into this large spiral staircase that led to the subway station, although it seemed pretty empty. I did end up running into some more feral dogs here. Finding new enemies is nice, because it means you've definitely not been there before. Going to where the actual subway itself was, it was completely pitch black here. Shadow Man's gun was the only source of light, and it wasn't even helpful. This entire area was just so big, man. Like, I found multiple of these holes that dropped me down to a completely new area of the sewer. It just felt like I was exploring new areas every time I turned a corner. Well, I got way too lost and never found Jack. However, I did travel to the asylum and hit soul level 8. 
And you know what that means. It was slightly disheartening knowing I needed 24 more to reach level 9 though. That is just so many. Anyway, time to open the level 8 coffin gate and head to the Temple of Blood. Right away there was a large open room with the actual lava. Not that hot coal stuff I can walk on. Sure seems like I'll be getting a third tattoo here. And of course, the sisters were here causing havoc, even though I'm the one trying to save this place. I don't know what happened here, but killing the sisters in this specific corner generated an insane amount of lag. My N64 nearly exploded. You know the drill by now, right? They're spinning blades and horrible obstacles designed by some awful person way in the past. The bad part about having all this lava is one missed jump and it's insta-death. And as you know, dying is incredibly punishing in this game. Oh hey, there was actually something new here. These pushing blocks hadn't been used in any of the other temples. A classic obstacle in platformers. Then there was this room where I had to climb along a rope with spinning blades and lava under me. It definitely looks cool, but is it really all that dangerous? Eventually, I made it to the heart of the temple. There was just lava everywhere with only a few platforms to jump along. Many switches were scattered around and these lowered that same ring thing. I hit all the switches and got my final tattoo. Shadow Man can now swim in the lava. And oh boy, why did they implement it like this? When he uses his tattoo effects, it generates like this red smoke. It was all fine and all before, but now the smoke is covering up most of the screen and it lowers the frame rate so much. I just, I feel like this was unnecessary. So this certainly opens lots of new areas, but would it be enough to reach level nine? Well, I could easily get one more soul from the Temple of Fire now. I was getting annoyed with not progressing at all. Just an hour of running around achieving absolutely nothing. So I decided to cuddle my dog Harley for a bit of motivation. Not sure if it helped, but she's a good girl. How can I refuse that? And hey, it did pay off a little bit. I found a dark soul after an hour. Still 12 more needed though. Finally, after yet another hour of aimlessly running around, I found what I needed. There was a retractor I hadn't gotten in the cageways. This means I could go to another new section of Liveside, hopefully finding something I need. I became a bit annoyed with this area because I also found a dark soul here. According to the game though, I already had 11 out of 11 in this location. So it just changed it to 12 out of 11. Well that sucks. This means any area I thought I had fully completed could just be flat out lying. I don't know why they went that route, maybe it's a mistake. Anyway, I went back to the Cathedral of Pain and put in a fourth retractor. This warped me to a third section of that prison, except now the dudes with their heads removed sometimes got up to attack me. Yeah, that ain't normal. In this area, I found the key card to this place. It was on a ripped off hand in the reader. Gross. With this, I could open all the locked doors I'd been seeing for the past 20 hours or so. So anyway, I was walking through the prison and got attacked by a helicopter. What is up with that, man? I'm trying to save you. Well, I pulled out the MP9 and went to work. I found the kitchen of the place and this guy's head just blew up out of nowhere. Then he started shooting me with a shotgun. This place is so weird, man. With all these doors being opened, I made it back to the area where the Lizard King was. Here I noticed an elevator shaft was open that was closed before. Aw oh man, is this finally where I'll find what I need? Well, not just yet, but I did find a shotgun. So uh, yeah, Shadow Man can dual wield shotguns. It's like those Model 18s in Modern Warfare 2. Also, what's going on here? Is this a morgue in the prison? Then I found a chapel where an accumulator was located. It doesn't help me beat the game, but this is the third one, so I can now obtain that ultimate weapon from the playrooms if I want. Oh look, some padded rooms for a nice bit of solitary confinement. I hate this place. And then finally, after what felt like ages, I found it. A new member of the five sitting in an electric chair? Shadow Man keeps talking trash to him, then he tells us he is Dr. Death, otherwise known as the Lizard King. Wait, what? I thought that very first guy was him. Well, it was playing the Lizard King's song when I found him, but whatever. Then the fight started. I went with the dual shotgun approach because how could I not? However, it wasn't really doing much, it seemed. 
All he ever did was try to whack me with his gun or baton or whatever that is he had. Guess I had to deal the finishing blow with a shadow power weapon, so that makes sense. He dropped his usual dark soul, but he also dropped a prism. Ooh, Jack's journal mentioned these are how the true forms are awakened. Just beyond this room was a rather odd looking gate. I put the prism inside and it opened. This took me to what appeared to be the asylum. In here I found a lever that released some of those true forms from their cages. I jumped down and went to fight. And uh, it didn't go so hot. They run around so fast and they launch these dark energy balls that home in on you. Shadow Man never had a chance unfortunately. I decided I needed to use the shield because it's absolutely overpowered. None of their attacks did anything, and they died. Each one dropped a dark soul, which is awesome. It turned out this area was the engine room. I thought I couldn't do anything here until I'd stopped all the pistons, but I just needed to finish the prison. There were 11 souls here that I previously hadn't had access to. I found yet another true form, which meant yet another dark soul. Just six more for level nine. Two more were in a room further in. Ah, oh, I was so close. Even further into this area, I found another one of those tube puzzles. With Jack's journal, now I didn't have to guess as to what the code was. After so long, I squeezed out the final souls I needed back in Louisiana. Completely forgot to check there, but whatever. I was now level 9. Heck yeah, dude. You know what time it is. We're opening the level 9 gate, and that's the final required one for beating the game. There is a level 10 gate if you get 25 more Dark Souls, but it's optional. I will be opening it in this playthrough though. Right away in here, I found something called Calabash, which isn't mentioned on the map. I used it on the icon on the floor and blew myself up. Well, that sucked. So after moving away safely, it blew up the floor. Oh snap, I've seen these floor panels all over the place. Like in the Temple of Blood, where there was a room with six of these things. Although at this point, it's mostly to retrieve more Dark Souls or more Kado. Anyway, this gate led to the Undercity, the last main area I hadn't been to. I was greeted by like 50 enemies right away, so really appreciate all that. Man, this place was basically pitch black. Good thing I can use the flambeau to generate some light, cause screw all that. I ran into a true form and decided to give that ultimate weapon a try, the Violator. And yeah, it kinda sucks in my opinion. Plus it has limited ammo, so I just don't get why you'd ever use it. There was this huge room with spinning platforms. Super easy, but I thought it was neat. The main theme of this area was just enemy spam. There were way too many in this area. Most weren't dangerous, so it just became a bit annoying to clear them out over and over. So I was climbing this tower with the spinning platforms, and when I reached the top, there was a keyhole to stop a dangerous spinning blade pillar. Through here was the third and final dark soul of this area, but I still wasn't done. Finally at the top I found an altar with the fifth and final retractor on it. I could head to the final necessary area of the game. I immediately went back to the cathedral and rammed it in there. This took me to Mordaunt Street, New York, in what appeared to be some rundown apartment complex. Then we get a rather odd cutscene of this dude who reminds me of Blanca from Street Fighter jumping around while crouched. This is the home improvement killer, and he seems just a bit crazy. Instead of fighting, he ran away, so I guess my goal is to chase him down. Basically, I was horrifically lost in this maze. Just abandoned room after abandoned room, and it's also super dark. Definitely not the most enjoyable area. I managed to find a functioning elevator in here, which I took to the top floor. Not sure if it's good or not, but gotta go somewhere. In the upper floors I found yet another accumulator. This is quite useless by this point, but it would give me some more ammo for the defiler. Somehow there's a blood waterfall here? Look, I get it, this dude has killed a lot of people, but come on, this just doesn't make sense. I ran into the guy in a corridor nearby, but he just kind of ran away from me. Oh my god dude, just let me kill you. After a few more minutes I did manage to take him down, and that was four of the five gone. He dropped a dark soul along with a prism. Another one of those prism gates in the top floor, so naturally I went in. This brought me to another segment of the engine room, and I was just getting shot from all directions. The enemy spam just gets nuts in the late game, I'm telling ya. Yet another one of those tube puzzles was located here. Three of the pistons were deactivated now. 
Well, the only thing really left to do was head back to Down Street Station and try to find Jack the Ripper. I'll cut ahead a bit. And by a bit, I mean an hour and a half. My god, this place is such a maze. But I did eventually find him. You know, this model of him kind of looks like Freddie Mercury. So when the fight starts, he jumps on the ceiling and crawls around like Spider-Man. Unfortunately for old Jack, he made the classic mistake of bringing a knife to a gunfight. It's not all that interesting. I mean, none of these fights are. I took him down in like 30 seconds or so, and I'd eliminated all members of the five. Jack dropped the third and final prism as well. So I opened one final prism gate, and I was prepared to end this madness. I did a fourth tube puzzle, stopping yet another piston. Now we could get past the area we found at the very start of the game. I went back to the main engine room, and there was a cutscene with Shadow Man's little brother once again crying for him to help. I'm sure this is all gonna go fine. I made my way to a massive room where Luke was sitting in a chair. Shadow Man was relieved he made it to Luke, and Luke thanks us by telling us quite the dark joke. Hey, you wanna hear a joke, Mikey? Sure. Once upon a time, there was a murderer and his victim walking hand in hand toward some deep, dark woods. The victim squeezes the murderer's hand real tight. He says, looking up pleadingly, his big brown eyes. I'm really scared, Mr. of the deep, dark woods. Luke, what the hell? He sighs and he says, You're scared. How the hell do you think I feel? I'm gonna be walking back through the mud on my own! Admittedly, it was a bit funny, but that definitely doesn't seem like something a little kid should tell. Oh my god, that isn't Luke. That's the evil guy who was with Jack the Ripper at the very start of the game. What a twist that I could not have possibly seen coming. This guy says he is the one who wrote the prophecy, hoping someone like us would come along and believe it. He tricked us into bringing all the Dark Souls to him, which, uh, yeah, I've been grabbing those things all game long. Anyway, he rants some more about how he's so smart and tricked us, then it's time to fight. Well, I literally killed him in like two seconds, so that was underwhelming. Lucky for us, he undergoes some Resident Evil style transformation, and this is his true form. So most of the floor disappears for this fight. He moves around, flying all over the place, and occasionally shoots dark energy at you. This is the only interesting fight in the entire game. None of the other bosses had anything close to it. I wound up falling and thought surely oh, I was dead, but nope. You can just run around on the bottom area, too. I guess that's nice. I was initially using the defiler along with my pistol, but I swapped to the shield. You just literally can't take damage with it. After a few minutes of fighting, this dude was toast. Shadow Man uses some kind of wild power with the Dark Souls to kill him even more. It shows a cutscene with John T watching the asylum explode in the background, then Shadow Man runs through Deadside, bragging about how awesome he is. And then finally, the credits play. Nah, I guess that was an okay ending. I was told it was worth it to see what happens when you die to this boss, so I did just that. The Legion dude has Shadow Man tied to the chair and steals all the Dark Souls from him. Then we see the army of true forms heading to end the world, and Nettie's freaking out about the prophecy being fulfilled. Yeah, I like that ending better. So the only thing left to do is see what's behind that level 10 soul door. One thing I haven't talked about all video is how this game has cheats. You unlock them by visiting various places in the game. It just awards you for walking past. By far the best one is play as dog. This, uh, it just turns Shadow Man into a dog. I don't know who had this idea, but this is the greatest cheat code I've ever seen. You can even combine big head mode and dog to be even better. This is amazing! Anyway, I ran around collecting the last of the Dark Souls, as a dog, of course. It took two hours or so to round up all the last ones, and it was finally here, level 10. So now I could finally open that level 10 coffin gate, which is even more amazing doing it as a dog. Well, what was back here? Was it worth it? Uh, not really. It's just a second defiler which means I can dual wield them, but uh, the shield is better, so yeah, it's not really worth it. I guess it was fun to find them all anyway, but uh, yeah, that's about all there is for this one. Game complete. 
So yeah, there you have it. My journey to beating Shadow Man. Jeez, what a ride that was. It's pretty cool to play a 3D Metroidvania from so long ago. But man, there are some issues. I feel like the combat was by far the thing that was lacking the most. It just felt incredibly repetitive with no real variety except for the very final boss. A lot of the textures of each area just look so similar everywhere and it felt easy to get lost. I'd say those were the main issues I had though, although they are big problems. It had a good enough story and I think the voice acting was really good for the time period. The graphics were fantastic too and it didn't really lag. I did enjoy unlocking all the new abilities to discover more of the map. It was always fun to get something new. Overall, it would have been a fun game to play back in the day. If you do want to play it, I'd highly recommend the remaster instead. Not only does it look and perform better, but it has new content added to it. I gave it a 6.5 out of 10 for enjoyability and a 4 out of 10 for difficulty. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Have a sneak peek at the next game. 244 games on the list. Oh my god, please be a good game. 3, 2, 1, go! 164? What's that? What is it? Oh, we were so close, but we are playing the next Penny Racers game, which is Penny Racers. So I think this is a English game, but the sequel is Japanese. But yeah, if you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like. It helps the channel a lot. And if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one.